What happened when Roman Britain came to an end? When nearly four centuries of imperial control here drew to a close? Was it a time of violence, chaos? Or was change more gradual? Two years ago, an extraordinary excavation took place on this quiet hillside in Buckinghamshire. It's thrown remarkable new light on a little understood period of our history that's all too often written off as the Dark Ages. Now, for the first time, we can reveal in detail what was discovered here and what it tells us about what was going on 1,500 years ago. We're going to dig deep into this mysterious period of history, trying to sift the archeological facts from the myth. And I get the chance to go up close with everything from ancient swords, shields, and jewelry. Evidence of violence. An iron object. If you look at it, it's actually embedded in the spine. But also some of the finest objects ever found from this forgotten time. The HS2 rail project is cutting a line through England, from London to Birmingham. It's a line through time, revealing historic discoveries along the route. As the engineers prepare to build the high-speed railway, Teams of archaeologists have been scouring the route in advance, seeking out and preserving every scrap of historical evidence they can find, from circular Bronze Age henges to Roman roads and hidden medieval churches. But one of the most important and surprising discoveries has been here in rural Buckinghamshire, where the Chiltern Hills meet the Vale of Aylesbury. The HS2 rail line is going to go right through this valley, past the town of Wendover, just over that ridge, from London to Birmingham. But when the archaeologists first arrived on this site and started to conduct their survey, there was no suggestion of what they'd eventually find. The first survey used geophysical techniques to scan beneath the surface for disturbances in the soil, clues to possible human-made features but the early assessment only showed a few ancient trackways. But then a few trial pits were dug to check out the site. Gradually, an extraordinary story started to appear, tantalizing glimpses of burials. They rarely show up on geophysical surveys, but the early dig showed bones and hints of metal. Teams of archaeologists move in, using metal detectors as a tool to help locate likely burial sites for excavation. We've got a large ferrous suit right here, okay. which, if I pinpoint it... Tents are put over the locations to protect them from the weather. Almost immediately, things get interesting. The detectors identify locations of metal objects before the digging begins in earnest. Digging carefully down, Matt painstakingly reveals an iron object, a spearhead. We haven't actually found any skeleton, any bones yet, but what we have found is a gorgeous spearhead right there. So that one will be the tip, basically. You see, that is one edge of it, and that's where the wood would have socketed into it. What's really odd is that it's a spearhead without a body at the moment. We haven't reached the bottom of the grave yet, so what we're going to do is I'm going to clean it all up and then Hopefully, we find a head. Excavating over the next day reveals the skeleton of the person who was buried with the spearhead, placed by their left shoulder. Well, we've got a body, which is nice. It's a bit of a relief, actually. So, going along with the spearhead, we've got this shield boss, which would be... If you picture a shield, it would be the middle bit, the iron bit, and it's kind of a bit for bashing, basically. It's a bit unusual because it's got a little bit of a, a pokey out bit there, which is 
more effective for bashing, I guess. As well as that, we've got these two metal objects here, which we think might be knives. Apparently, with Saxons, it's, uh, it's good to have two knives on the go at once. Uh, one for kind of fighting, one for whatever else you need to do, eating, whatever. Across the site, more burials are emerging, all in the early Anglo-Saxon style. And many of them are revealing weaponry, including the remains of several more lavishly decorated shields and more spearheads. As each grave is excavated, a picture is emerging of what seems to be a group of wealthy people with valuable Anglo-Saxon artefacts from the 5th and 6th centuries AD, the era immediately after Roman rule. Traditionally, the Romans are portrayed literally packing up and leaving Britain in 410 AD. But historians now think it was far more complicated, with a mix of interacting cultures, particularly in this early phase, a time that is short on historic evidence. The written record for this period is incredibly thin. We have a few contemporary references and then a little bit more written over a century later. We get the legendary names like Arthur and Vortigern, but the picture that emerges is one of shifting times, uncertainty in the post-Roman period, and the arrival of Europeans in Britain, people who would go on to change the course of British history. The lack of written records means that the physical objects from this time are incredibly useful to help interpret this little understood period. After being recorded on site, the finds are being moved to archaeological headquarters for further assessment. I've come to this secret location in Cardiff where the objects are undergoing their initial evaluation. Let's go inside and check them out. Assessing the finds is Johan McCarthy. All right, Johan, what have we got here? Okay, so here we have a selection of weapons from the site. Uh, obviously, here on this side, we have a couple of spearheads. Vicious looking spearheads. Yes, right? indeed, um, indeed. And what a state of preservation. You can, I mean, you can see that they're sort of, they leave nothing to the imagination. Can I pick this evil looking one up here? Yeah, yeah, indeed, yeah, that's uh, pretty robust. And what does the what does the width mean on that? Is that is that is that a, just to make it look nice, or is that a, a more effective injury? Yeah, it definitely creates more effective injuries. Okay. As as the blade widens, obviously that's going to open a larger wound, which is going to be more bleeding. It's going to be a very very nasty injury indeed. Wow. As well as spears, many burials, male and female, adult and even some children, include an Anglo-Saxon style knife, known as a seax. So here we have a seax, and a seax is essentially a really big knife. Uh, now, it could have been used as a weapon. There are theories that it may have had more of a practical use as sort of a hunting knife as well. Uh, but um, in combat, you can see how effective it would be. If you're in the press of, uh, of close combat, in a shield, in a shield packed ball, in. Yeah, yeah, then it's gonna be a lot more effective to use a shorter weapon to get into somebody's ribs or their groin, some nasty area like that and cause somebody some horrible damage. Because you can't wave your sword around because you're all, you're all yeah, tight. Yeah, exactly. So you're in a shield wall, you think everything's going fine, and you look down and someone's just stuck one of those into your thigh. One remarkable discovery on site brings home the potential for violence in the early Anglo-Saxon world. Well, this is an exciting burial, the 30th so far. Um, much like the other burials, it's aligned to a specific set of cardinal points. This one is uh, northwest, southeast, and like all our other burials, its head is either in the southern part or the western part. However, unusually, the burial is flexed. Now, most of our burials are supine extended on their back with their legs sticking out down to the bottom of the, of the burial. These legs are, are bent slightly, flexed. You'll notice that there is a lovely copper alloy disc brooch down there. And if you see the staining on the bone just towards me, that's also was the location of another copper alloy object, which has degraded completely 
and left the staining on the bones. So much like the other burials, we've got these two disc brooches, probably forming class for a cloak. But what makes this burial very, very interesting, you'll notice towards the base of the spine, an iron object. If you look at it, it's actually embedded in the spine, a notch in the spine. So when we remove it, you'll see the notch in it. Whether it was caused of death, is another, we don't know for certain yet, although the chances are it is. This is the most curious of the burials so far. Not the richest in grave goods, but this particular event, this is a, a singular event that we've actually got in the archaeological record. Welcome to the History Hit YouTube channel. Hope you enjoyed that video. And if you'd like to see more videos where we attempt to try and bring history to life, uh, please don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell. Cheers guys, see you soon.